Um, growing up, I used to cook with my grandmother a lot. My grandmother lived with us and she took care of us. There were four of us, um, but I was the one that helped her out with the cooking. Um, so we used to kind of just sit around and make wontons. We would make these wontons and then we would freeze them. And then we would, once they froze, then you could put them like in a big old bag and put them in the freezer and you can use them whenever. Um, the thing about the recipe is uh, when we were growing up, it was four of us uh, kids, like we weren't as I would say well resourced as we are now. So um, a lot of the recipes that I learned are really basic, basic things that come from communist China, come from a time when the resources were scarce. So, so when I look at this recipe, the origin of it was making it with my grandmother. But over time, as I've gotten older, I, um, you know, incorporated different things into this recipe. Some of the sauces that I really like and the holding technique is not, you know, what I did growing up. Growing up, you just, you throw in ground pork into the wonton wrapper and you, you just kind of crumple it up and, and that's it. You just toss it in the pan. Um, but now I kind of fold it um, sort of like a gold gringot. Um, because I just think it looks cuter. Um, it presents a little bit better. So um, the origin was definitely a little bit more humble. Just me and my grandma in a kitchen, just mashing up wontons and freezing in. Um, and now as I've gotten older, I've kind of made it my own and incorporated different things that I like into it um, and just made it a little bit more, um, more something I would, um, uh, again, just more my own. So that's, that's the source of the recipe. Um, the origin with my grandma and now just kind of making it my own. This is something that my grandmother taught me, like she would, you know, use scallions and then just drop them in water and then they would just keep growing. So, so that's what I do. I use these like last week and I just dump them in water and they just keep growing. Um, I think Soup and Hope is a really great opportunity to bring the community together um, for storytelling, for, um, for being this platform for the community to, to engage with one another. And, um, and I've, I've always really enjoyed going to Soup and Hope, you know, learning more about people, their experiences. I think it really um, brings the sense of, of knowing people a little bit better. And I like that. I like feeling like we have this platform to, to kind of connect with one another. Um, and obviously I like that there's food, um, big fan of food uh, and the soups have always been really great. So. Um, I do miss that component and, and I'm interested in seeing what Soup and Hope looks like moving forward in this, in this time, you know, will there be more engagement because it's easier to access, you know, um, is there going to be less because we don't have necessarily the soup portion? I don't know, but it's kind of exciting to, to see it sort of evolve and, and incorporate, you know, some of these changes that we're seeing um, because of these times we're in. Um, so in my talk, I'm going to talk a little bit about, um, about community, how much I appreciate Ithaca as a community, how much I appreciate um, when people kind of look outside themselves and kind of think about others. And, um, and I think this idea of bringing people together for soup and hope and, and talking about, you know, the way that I grew up, my, my grandmother, you know, my siblings and, and being Chinese American, um, I think it's all sort of intertwined um, in, in my identity. And I think you know, cooking Chinese food is is pretty important to me because in, it's just this really nice reminder of, you know, where I'm from, how I grew up, being Chinese American food is is pretty huge. Um, and uh, and so I think also it has evolved um, as being Chinese American has evolved over time. I think there's just a lot in there and it really does connect me to my culture and, and who I am. So I think it's, it's a lot of different ideas. Yes. So we've got sesame oil, we've got oyster sauce, all this you can get at Wegmans. You've got uh, shushing cooking wine. You have, I like to use low sodium soy sauce. And here is the wonton wrappers that I use. I get this from Wegmans, so it's pretty easy to find. All these things you can get at Wegmans. They have a pretty nice section. Um, and also Chinese New Year's coming up or the Lunar New Year because Vietnamese people celebrate it. Other Asian Pacific Island communities celebrate the Lunar New Year. That's coming up February 12th. And um, traditionally you would eat like noodles. So noodles represent longevity. Um, so if you were to make the soup around New Year's, you could put noodles in it. 
There's really no science. I'm just, I just kind of pour stuff in <laughs> and then I smell it. I have an aunt in Seattle and I went to visit her last year and we were cooking all of these things that my grandmother and I used to cook and a lot of it is really just eyeballing it and smelling it. For the scallions, instead of chopping it, I usually just use a scissor. A lot of Koreans cook with, I mean, when they prepare food, they also just use scissors. It's just so much easier. All right, so we've got this pan, we've got the water, we've got the wonton wrappers. So, so you put about like a teaspoon here and then you take your finger into regular water and then put it around the corner. And then you fold it in half into this triangle. Up into a triangle and then you put some more water on one of the edges and then you fold it like this. So it's like a little gringot. And then you place it here and then you're going to freeze it. Um, and so I like to do this so that it usually stands up, you know, like this, like this little coin purse. So we'll make a couple more. I'm going to try to do it a little bit closer to the screen so you kind of see it a little bit better. Yeah. When, when I used to make it with my grandma, she would just kind of fold it up like, just kind of wrap it up like this, and this would be it. Um, and this would be her version, and she would squeeze the top, and this is how my grandmother would make it. So this would be her technique. And just, and, and people can do this. You could just squeeze it all the way at the top, and this is it. So um, I kind of would just like to get a little bit fancy with it, which is why I do the purse. But both of those methods, like, are valid. You can do however you feel comfortable with. Um, but yeah, so I like to fold it like this. Yeah, I just think it looks kind of lovely and it stands on its own. But also this method, you know, it will also stand on its own. I mean, it's, so I'll, I'll do one of this is the way my grandmother would make it. This is how we would make it together. Yeah, you can you can also put water on the edges. Um, really kind of just squeeze it. And then pinch it. And then you have this. So this is how me and my grandmother would make it. So, and I just do it a little bit different. And, and I think that's kind of nice about like recipes, you can make them your own, you know, the presentation is really up to you. Um, all of these methods will work. Um, so when you're doing this at home, um, I like to squeeze out the air. So once I put it in the freezer, it looks, after I freeze it, so you have to freeze them spread out and then you can put them in a freezer bag because if you want to just put it all in here, it, they're all gonna mesh. and It'll turn into one congealed blob like this way. You can take out like three, four, dump it in water, boil it, and then you would have one on soup. Um, and you can put noodles in it, you can put bok choy in it. Um, it's really up to you. Um, I cook it with chicken stock. I just drop it into the water, boil it. Once it comes to the top, cook it for about another five minutes. Um, and then, um, you know, pour it, pour it into your bowl. And again, I love making wontons. I love cooking. I love cooking with friends. I love showing people how to make different um, Chinese recipes. I originally was debating between this and a lotus root soup. Oh, the lotus root soup is a more traditional Chinese New Year dish. Um, whereas this is not a Chinese New Year dish. This is really more something you would eat normally. Like I would, I would have this on the weekends or like um, after I got home from school, 
Um, and like certain soups are specific for the Lunar New Year. Uh, but I don't think anybody would want to make a lotus root soup. I don't think a lot of people know what lotus root is or have ever seen lotus root. So um, this just seemed more, uh, more something people would um, recognize right. and maybe try at home. Cooking is about sharing. It's about um, this experience about it's about storytelling too. It's about, you know, this is where this recipe came from. And like, you know, my grandmother before her used to like make wontons with her grandmother. And, and so um, I think there's a lot to be said about cooking and, and sharing and, and really enjoying this great food um, that comes with all this history and um, that, that sometimes you kind of create together with somebody. I think that's really special too. It's the experience of making it together. It's all the stories that come with it. And then it's like enjoying it.